Good morning, my name is Peyton, and I will be sharing the Advent reading for this Sunday. Jeremiah 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. On the first day of Advent, we light a blue Advent candle. The blue Advent candle is the candle of expectation and hope. May I remind each and every one of us of God's great promise to us. He is hope, he is our Redeemer, and he is our Savior. Let us pray. Father, during the Advent season, may we be reminded of your promises to us and your fulfillment of them. Help us to prepare our lives for this Advent within us. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you so much, Peyton, for leading us in our Advent reading uh, as we begin this season of Advent, preparing to welcome and celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Marlin, and on behalf of the members, officers, and leaders here at St. Luke, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Welcome to our virtual worship experience. If you would right now, take a moment and invite somebody to worship with us and let them know it's about to go down at St. Luke. God has been good to us, and I do pray that you didn't eat too much like your pastor did. Amen. I was being punished all night for eating way too much food, but I do want to shout out my wife for putting her entire foot in our Thanksgiving dinner. I am grateful to God that I have a brilliant woman that stands by my side who's not afraid to get in the kitchen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Why don't you take a moment and get your virtual evangelism on? Come on, invite a family member, invite a neighbor, invite a co-worker to worship with us because it's about to go down at St. Luke. Amen. As you are inviting people to worship with us, this morning, I do want to share in just a couple of announcements. I want to remind you that on Monday at 6 p.m., we have round two, and it is a wonderful time and a wonderful exchange uh, in the Word of God. It is the tradition within the black church that you talk back to the preacher. But round two takes it a step further and you actually get to talk to the preacher and we dialogue on God's word. And it is a wonderful and rich time of studying the word together. Uh, coming up on December 5th, uh, we are having our first self-care Saturday. I am excited about it. You can visit our Facebook page. You can visit our website to click on the link within the flyer and then you'll be able to be registered to take part in our self-care Saturday. We are so excited about all the di discipleship opportunities that are happening here at St. Luke. want to remind you if you have not participated that we do have church school every uh, every Sunday morning beginning at 9 15. For more information, uh, please let us know uh, and we will get you the contact information so that you can participate in our church school. We also have our men's Bible study that happens every Saturday, 830 a.m. The men come together and they share and it is always a wonderful time in the Lord. Uh, we do have coming up in January at the end of January. I do want you to put this date on your calendar. January 25th, 26th and 27th, we're going to have an evangelism workshop. This is a time and this is a season when people are crying out for God. There are people who need answers, and I believe that the answer that the world needs today is a man named Jesus. And we're going to have an evangelism workshop led by Proclaiming the Word Ministries. Uh, Pastor and Reverend Leroy Armstrong is going to provide leadership for us January 25th, 26th, and 27th. We also have our first quarterly conference coming up on December 17th. I'm asking all officers and leaders to prepare your reports uh, to have those in. You should have already received a message 
But I did want to remind you that on December 17th, we will have our first quarterly conference in which we will share the work of the church with our presiding elder. Amen. It's giving time. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together and worship the Lord because it is time to give unto the Lord. The Bible lets us know that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And here at St. Luke, we operate on the stewardship principle of give, save, live. That is, we give our first 10% to God. We save 10% for ourselves and then we live off the rest. It is a stewardship principle that will bless you. We thank you for your generosity and your gifts that continue to allow us to do ministry in the midst of this pandemic. You have remained faithful. God has continued to bless. And I thank you for your generosity. Amen. Let us now prepare to go higher in the worship experience as our praise team leads us in worship. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much to our praise team for leading us in worship. If you would, as we prepare to receive the word of God, please bow your head, close your eyes and let us look to the Lord. Eternal God, we celebrate you for you are worthy of praise. God, we thank you on this first Sunday of Advent that in the midst of what is going on in our world, you remind us that we still have hope. I ask you now, God, that as we share in your word, that you would speak through me to your people, that you would be glorified. God, my prayer is simple. Allow me to preach what I believe and to believe what I preach. Because, God, if I don't believe it, then I should not preach it. And, God, I pray for your people, that they are not only hearers of your word, 
but I pray, God, that we'll be doers of your holy word. For truly thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen. Praise God. Excited about our time together in the word this morning. Uh, if you would, please go with me to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And I want to read for you hearing this morning, verse 26 through verse 35. Luke chapter 1. I want to read for you hearing verse 26 through verse 35. And this morning I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. However, you can follow along in whatever version that you have. Word of the Lord declares, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph. Joseph was of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was very much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive and in your womb bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And, as of, and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. And he will be called son of God. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, this morning, as we as we share in God's word, I want to start a series entitled Home for the Holidays. Home for the Holidays. As November is coming to a close and as we approach December, after almost 10 months of adjusting to a new normal, I think it's no secret that we are still facing a deadly pandemic. As COVID cases continue to rise and as we head into what some are calling a dark winter, this is a series that will lead us all the way to Christmas. And it is my prayer that as we share in this series, that it will serve as an encouragement, and that it will help you to navigate what life will look like in this 2020 holiday season. We only have four Sundays leading up until Christmas, and over the next four weeks, I wanna talk to you about how you can bring the Christmas spirit to your home for this holiday season. I wanna look over the next four weeks on, on how you can usher in the Christmas spirit and bring it home for the holidays. And as we begin this series, Home for the Holidays, there is a message embedded in the title of the sermon series. And the message that is embedded in the title of the sermon series, it's a simple message, and, and, and it is this. Though we are facing unprecedented times, you don't have to be a Scrooge during this holiday season. Though things are different, though they are not the same, you don't have to be a Scrooge during this holiday season, but you can, in fact, experience all the joy that accompanies this time of the year. But in order to do that, you have to have proper perspective. Having proper perspective begins 
with getting out of your flesh. Somebody say amen. See, in order to bring the Christmas spirit home for the holidays, you have to get out of the flesh. See, you, you, you cannot have proper perspective if you are in the flesh because first and foremost, the Christmas spirit really is spiritual. Amen. That, that's a simple but, but powerful truth. The Christmas spirit, it really is spiritual. See, for the most part, uh, when the larger culture talks about the Christmas spirit, the focus is not on the supernatural. And so for you to make a shift towards giving your attention to the supernatural and being more sensitive to what the spirit of God is doing and is saying, it will transform the way you experience the holiday season. See, the, the essence of the Christmas spirit it often gets confused with the dominating zeitgeist of our time. Can I let you know this morning that the Christmas spirit is not commercial. The Christmas spirit is not about the gifts that are given and the gifts that are received. The Christmas spirit is, is not about Frosty the snowman is not about Rudolph that red nosed reindeer is not about eggnog it's not about mistletoe when, when, when we look at these things what we should understand is that these things make up some of the wonderful traditions that are associated with this time of the year but the Christmas spirit is first and foremost spiritual the Christmas spirit is spiritual see more more than I want to know where to get the best deals on Black Friday and oh yes I was on my computer looking for them amen somebody but but more than I want to know where I can find the best deals on Black Friday more than I want to know where I can see the best lights the truth is in this time and in this season uh, what I want to know more than anything else is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church what I want to know uh, more than anything else uh, is what God is doing uh, in this time and in this season uh, because first and foremost the Christmas spirit it really is spiritual and so over the next four weeks as we approach Christmas what I want to do is I, I want to look at four different passages that will help to give us proper perspective on the Christmas spirit listen listen to this the best way to understand how to bring the Christmas spirit to your home. The best way to usher the Christmas spirit into your home is to look at what the word of God teaches us about the first Christmas. It's to go back. It means we've got to look at the original sources. We've got to go back to the foundation so that we can rediscover what the Christmas spirit is really all about. Today, as we examine the word of God, uh, what we will see is that there is nothing new under the sun. See, there are, in fact, some similarities in the way that the first Christmas was experienced and how we are experiencing this holiday season right now. And that's why one way that you can begin to usher the, 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 the Christmas spirit into your home, one way that you can bring the Christmas spirit into your home for the holidays is to understand that blessings can sometimes come disguised as burdens. Oh, that's good teaching. See, 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 at the foundation of Christmas, you find that blessings can come disguised as burdens. 
And, and when you are, are going through a storm, when life is rough and times are difficult, and as you go through those difficult seasons, you find yourself in the flesh, you put yourself in a position where you can't even ascertain how in the world a burden could become a blessing. See, see oftentimes burdens can blind us from our blessings see at the center of our text this morning is a woman by the name of Mary uh, Mary is one who has a very intriguing story and what is so intriguing about Mary's story is that out of nowhere Mary's life gets interrupted I, I mean, things were going well. Everything was fine. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Mary's life is interrupted. I, I, out of nowhere, Mary gets introduced to a new normal. Out of nowhere, Mary is, is thrown into an experience that meant she had to adjust the way that she lived her life for nine months. If you look at the text, what you know is that Mary had a plan. Uh, Mary was engaged to a man named Joseph. Mary and Joseph would soon be married. They would soon become husband and wife. Mary had this wonderful plan laid out for her life. But all of a sudden, her plan was interrupted. Bible says in verse 31 that that aimed that the angel Gabriel visited Mary and the angel turned, told her you will conceive and in your womb bear a son and you will name him Jesus. Now, when we hear those words, when when you and I hear the words, you will conceive and in your womb bear a son and you will name him Jesus. When we hear those words, we hear them in a completely different context than that of Mary. See, the birth of Jesus for us, it is a time of celebration. The, the birth of Jesus for us. It, 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 it ushers us into this time of Advent where we are filled with hope and with joy. See, when, when we think about the birth of Jesus, it causes us to focus on what it means for God to give up God's divine privilege and humble God's self by becoming a servant and wrapping God's self in humanity and becoming one of us. But you've got to understand that that for Mary, hearing the words, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. It meant that her life was interrupted by something that she did not have on her radar. See, be becoming becoming pregnant as a virgin. It was not part of Mary's five year plan. And, and, and if we're if we're going to tell the truth, it, it, it was actually devastating to her life. It, it was not something that 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 Mary could have prepared for when 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 the angel visited her and told her that she would conceive and in her womb uh, she would bear a son it was something that Mary could not prepare for because watch this it was something that had never happened before and as we begin to talk about how to usher in the Christmas spirit, we want to be grounded in the word of God. And one of the first things that we see is that the Christmas spirit ushered in an interruption in Mary's life that she wasn't prepared for. And that's why it is not at all surprising that Mary had some questions. Mary had questions because she knew that that being pregnant was a burden and that meant that she was going to have to make some major adjustments in her life. And that's why Mary responded to the angel in verse 34 by saying, how can this be? 
when I'm still a virgin. And I want to be clear this morning. The reason that Mary asked the question was not because she had doubt in her heart. The reason that Mary asked the question is not because she lacked faith. But Mary asked the question because she realized that being pregnant was a burden that would cost her everything. Well, what am I talking about this morning? You, you realize at, at the time of the greeting that Mary received, she was engaged to Joseph. And because she was engaged to Joseph, if she was found to be pregnant before she was actually married, she could face a severe penalty. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 13 through, through 21, this is what the Bible says regarding a, a woman who became pregnant before she was married. It says, if a man takes a wife and after sleeping with her dislikes her and slanders her and gives her a bad name saying, I married this woman, but when I approached, approached her, I did not find proof of her virginity. Then the young woman's father and mother shall bring to the town elders at the gate proof that she was a virgin. Her father will say to the elders, I gave my daughter in marriage to this man, but he dislikes her. Now he has slandered her and said, I did not find your daughter to be a virgin. But here is the proof of my daughter's virginity. Then his parents shall display the cough before the elders of the town and the elders shall take the man and punish him. They shall find him a hundred shekels of silver and give them to the young woman's father because this man has given an Israelite virgin a bad name and she shall continue to be his wife. He must not divorce her as long as he lives. But listen to what verse 20 says. Verse 20 says, if however the charge is true and no proof of the young woman's virginity can be found. She shall be brought to the door of her father's house. And there the men of her town shall stone her to death. She has done an outrageous thing in Israel by being promiscuous while still in her father's house. And you must purge the evil from among you. See, in, in Mary's time. If a woman was pregnant before she was married, there would be no gender reveal party. There would be no pictures of the pregnant belly posted on social media because that woman could very well lose her life. And that's why Mary asked the angel the question, how can this be since I am a virgin? Mary asked the question because she realized that being pregnant was a burden that could cost her everything. She asked the question because she understood that being pregnant could cost her her life. And so we see that the birth of Jesus meant something different for Mary than it did for us. See, the birth of Jesus, we, we see it as a blessing. But when we go back to the source, what we can see is that the Christmas spirit, it started out as what appeared to be a burden. See, that, that's why in order for you to really understand and in order, in order for you to grasp how you can bring the Christmas spirit home for the holidays, you cannot be in your flesh. See, if, 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 if the flesh would have looked at Mary, the flesh would have looked at Mary and saw someone who was pregnant before she was married, and the flesh would have said, we have to purge this evil from our community. See, the flesh would have looked at Mary, and, and the flesh would have looked at her, and the flesh would have looked at the blessing uh, that God had placed on the inside of her, and the flesh would have said that that blessing uh, that God placed in her womb uh, was just a burden. But when you can begin to shift, hallelujah, 
When you can begin to shift your attention towards the supernatural, when you can become more sensitive to the Spirit of God, then you can see that blessings can often come disguised as burdens. See, the truth is, there are many people who during this holiday season feel like Mary felt when her life was interrupted. If, if we're honest, the, the, there are people who, 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 who just like Mary, they, they, they can't see God's blessings. They can't see God's provision because they are burdened and they are blinded by the burdens that weigh heavy on their shoulders. See, when you consider that in this holiday season, uh, we currently have over 13 million cases uh, of COVID-19. When, when you consider that some 265,000 people uh, have died in the United States uh, as a result of COVID. Uh, when you consider uh, that close to 1.5 million people have died worldwide, uh, this holiday season uh, can feel like a burden. That's why today, I want you to know that, that like Mary, it's okay if you have some questions. Now like Mary, it's, it's okay if you have some questions. If, if right now you look at your life and look at the current circumstance uh, and you survey what's going on across our country and in our world and you have some questions, uh, it's okay uh, for you to open your mouth uh, and say, God, uh, how can this be? How can this be that, that I won't be able to spend uh, 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 this Christmas uh, with my family? How can it be that, that if we do get together, we're not supposed to have more than 10 people? God, how can it be that, that if I want to see my family during this holiday season, I've got to quarantine myself and take a COVID test just to be around the people that I love? How can it be? I want you to know that it's okay to ask the question. How can it be? But what you cannot allow to happen is that while asking the question, how can it be? You cannot allow the burdens that you are facing in this holiday season to blind you to the blessings that God has in store for you. Ah, Jesus, listen, he, here's, here's the blessing. Ah, God, help me. Here's the blessing, ah, Jesus, in this holiday season. The blessing is that when it's all said and done, ah, God, you do know that COVID-19 does have an expiration date. You do know that COVID-19 won't last always. And the blessing is that when it's all said and done, we get to see that God can take something that should have killed you woo, and turn it into a blessing. Help me, Holy Ghost. What, 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 what is the blessing in, in this holiday season uh, is that when it's all said and done, we'll get to see God take something uh, that should have killed you uh, and turn it into a blessing. See, when we go back to the first Christmas, when we go back to the source, we see that the Christmas spirit, it lets us know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and have been called according to his purpose. See, that is the message that the angel Gabriel shared with Mary. In verse 30, the angel said to Mary, Mary, don't don't be afraid you have found favor with God Mary I know that 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 your life 
has been interrupted. I know uh, that if you're looking at things uh, from a fleshly perspective, uh, your life uh, is about to come uh, to an end. Uh, but I want you to know uh, you don't have to be afraid. Uh, God's favor uh, is upon you uh, in the thing uh, that looks like it will destroy you. Uh, the thing uh, that looks like it will take you out. Uh, God's going to turn that thing around uh, and that very thing uh, is going to bless you. I want you to know it's okay to have questions. It's okay to have some questions, but don't forget that through it all, you are still favored. Don't forget that through it all, the Lord is with you. And watch this. God has something great on the inside of you, and God is about to bring that thing out like preaching this morning ah Jesus y'all help me in the virtual church come on and hit some like buttons uh, make a comment tweet a text uh, hallelujah listen to this I, I, I know things aren't easy uh, I know that COVID-19 uh, interrupted life uh, as we knew it uh, but the reality is uh, despite the interruptions uh, that come your way uh, you still have God's favor uh, on your life uh, despite the interruptions uh, that come your way God is still with you what I like about this text is that Gabriel looked past where Mary was at and Gabriel spoke to where she would be once she made it through this season see we are in a season that has interrupted life we are in a season that has interrupted the plans that we had Thanksgiving was different Christmas will be different we now wear masks everywhere that we go we now practice social distancing because out of nowhere our lives were interrupted but we must not be overcome in this season our current status it will not define us because we have God's favor on our life and with God God's favor it comes God's blessing see my Bible it lets me know that the blessings of the Lord make rich and they add no sorrow to it why don't you take a moment and get your virtual testimony on come on hit that like button comment in the chat box tweet or text and let somebody know that I am favored by God got God's favor over me yeah I've experienced some interruptions yeah things haven't gone as planned but you better watch out because I have God's favor ah Jesus hey God I, I, I know I know I know I know that COVID-19 has turned the world upside down I know that there are some things working uh, against this. I know that we have some challenges that we must overcome, um, but I believe uh, that through it all, uh, the Lord is with us. Uh, I believe uh, that through every trial, uh, through every test, uh, through every difficulty, I believe uh, that the Lord uh, is with us. Uh, I believe uh, that the God who created the heavens uh, and the earth, uh, the God uh, who sits high, uh, and looks low the miracle working God that parted the Red Sea the miracle working God that opened blinded eyes the miracle working God that helped the lame to walk the miracle working God that delivered our foreparents from the shackles of slavery and the oppression of Jim Crow the miracle working God that allowed us to build colleges the miracle working God that gave us the strength to march 
fights for freedom and equality. I believe that that God is with us. And if God be for us, I'm just crazy enough to believe that he's more than the world against us. And that's why I'm preaching this series, Home for the Holidays, because I want you to understand that the Christmas spirit, it really is spiritual. Today, I came to speak to the inner person. Today, I want to speak to your spirit because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against powers and principalities in high places. And if you want to bring the Christmas spirit home for the holidays, that you've got, then you've got to be able to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Uh, listen, uh, the angel Gabriel uh, didn't just show up uh, to visit Mary uh, because he just happened to be in Nazareth. Uh, no, uh, it was spiritual. Uh, uh, see, Gabriel uh, didn't stop by uh, because he was in the neighborhood. Uh, it was spiritual. Uh, the Bible says uh, that Gabriel uh, was sent by God uh, to visit Mary uh, for one purpose, uh, and that was to deliver a message that means that Gabriel was on a mission and the mission was to deliver a message and in order for Mary to understand in order for Mary to receive the message that Gabriel had with all that was going on in her life she had to have an ear ah, Jesus to hear what the spirit of the Lord was was saying and the same is true for you this morning in order for you to get this revelation you got to have an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying the message that Gabriel came to deliver to Mary is the same message that I have for you in the midst of this pandemic it's the same message that I have for you in the midst of this this new normal and it is that you've got greatness on the inside of you that you've got greatness growing on the inside of you and you cannot be blinded by the burdens because God is about to bring your greatness out help me preach this morning here's the message here's the message that God sent Gabriel to deliver here it is in Luke chapter 1 verses 31 through 33 the Bible declares and now you will conceive and in your womb you will bear a son and you will name him Jesus he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David watch this and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there will be no end look at verse 32 ah God verse 32 says he will be great back it up and rewind it verse 32 says he will be great the message that Gabriel came to deliver uh, the message that seemed like a burden that message that seemed like it was going to ruin her life is the very thing that would produce greatness on the inside of Mary and God was going to bring that greatness out and that's the message that I have for you this morning uh, just like Gabriel uh, went to Mary uh, and delivered to her uh, the message uh, that she had something uh, that would change the world uh, on the inside of her uh, praise God uh, I came to let you know uh, that life is filled uh, with interruptions uh, but when God's favor uh, is upon you uh, the things uh, that you thought would take you out uh, when God's favor uh, is upon 
upon you. Uh, God has a way uh, of turning those things uh, into blessings uh, because the Bible lets us know uh, that all things uh, work together uh, for the good of them uh, that love the Lord. Uh, so in the midst uh, of all uh, that is going on, uh, you don't have to be afraid uh, because the Lord uh, is with you. Uh, you don't have to be afraid uh, because God uh, has favored you. Uh, you can bring uh, the Christmas spirit uh, home uh, for the holidays uh, when you realize uh, that blessings come uh, disguised uh, as burdens. Uh, whoever has an ear, uh, let them hear uh, what the spirit uh, is saying uh, to the church uh, because greatness uh, is on the inside of you uh, and God uh, is about to bring it out. Thank you, Jesus. You've got greatness on the inside of you. And God is going to bring that greatness out. Truth is, we have experienced much, much loss during this pandemic. We've experienced much loss during this pandemic. But because COVID has slowed down the pace of life, it afforded us an opportunity to spend more time with loved ones than we would have had before the pandemic. Before COVID, it was almost like we, we lived in a home with complete strangers because life was, was so demanding. But now we get to, to eat dinner on a nightly basis with our families. Truth is, God has a way of disguising your blessings in the form of burdens. Can I testify for just a moment, St. Luke? When I lost my job in March, it, it was a challenging season. When I lost my job, it, it felt like a burden. But what I didn't know was that God was working some things out. It, it, it was difficult to see because I, I felt like I would never find another job that, that, that fit the vision that I had for my life. A job that, that would allow me to, to work and to pastor and to spend time with my family. I, I didn't think I could find another job like that and it created a burden. But what I didn't know is that sometimes, is that oftentimes, Blessings can come disguised as burdens. Watch this. Not only did God open the door for another job, not, not only was it a role that, that elevated me. Watch this. Here's the blessing. It is a place where the vision that God gave me can come to pass. Ah, Jesus. I'm, I, I'm not talking about fulfilling the requirements of my role. What I'm talking about is God giving me a vision. And, and I've been wondering for years, how in the world is, is this vision going to live? And God said, when you got let go back in March, that was a blessing disguised as a burden because I've got a place for you. If you would just trust me, I've got a place for you that will allow your vision to become reality. What I want you to know this morning is that you can in fact usher the Christmas spirit into your home for the holidays if you have the right perspective. That means you've got to step out of the flesh And you have to say, God, speak to my spirit. You have to have an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Because the Christmas spirit, it really is spiritual. 
all in my spirit. I, I just hear the words, let's get spiritual. But because we spend so much time in the flesh and, and the mantra has been, let's get physical. But in my spirit, all I can hear is let's get spiritual. St. Luke, I, I want you to know that as we prepare to enter into a new year, we're going to begin the new year with the Daniel fast because it's time to get spiritual. If you live by the flesh, you will reap of the flesh. But I want the fruits of the Spirit in my life. I, I want the fruits of the Spirit to manifest in my life. I want the joy. I want the peace. I, I want it to be manifested in my life. And so we've got to get spiritual. And we're going to spend time in God's face. We're going to turn down the plate and seek the face of God because it's time to get spiritual. This Sunday, I've, I've been sent on assignment to speak to those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And this morning, if, if you are hearing God speak to you, we want to connect with you in prayer. If you are hearing God speak to you, we want to share with you what it means to be saved. If God is speaking to your heart and today is the day that you want to rededicate your life because through everything that has been going on, you realize that your life really took a turn for the worse when you stepped out of the church. You, you haven't had the peace. You haven't had the joy. You haven't been content. But I want you to know that there's room at the cross for you. This morning, if you don't have a church home, St. Luke would love for you to unite with us. We are not a perfect church. We are a forgiven church. We do understand that all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory. But we thank God for Jesus Christ. This morning, if, if you need prayer, this morning, if you want to be saved, this morning, if you want to rededicate, or if you just want to join St. Luke, we say call right now. The number's on your screen. We have ministers waiting to pray for you, minister to you, share with you. Because we thank God for you. Let's get spiritual. Let's get spiritual. And let's bring the Christmas spirit home for the holidays. Please receive the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.